three, maybe four uh, recipients in the room. So if you have received the James A. Partridge Award in the past, would you please stand? including career dedicated, career long dedicated service, leadership, and a commitment to the empowerment of those they serve. The 2014 James A. Partridge Outstanding African American Information Professional Award is presented to Dr. Janet Sims Wood, who in her career has embraced the responsibilities of librarian, educator, publisher, and <coughs> bibliographer, and historian. Her fields of special subject expertise are women's studies, African American history, and oral history. Dr. Sims Wood currently works at Prince George's Community College as a librarian and oral historian. But she has been, in the past, a librarian for the public, community college, and university libraries, working in everything from the children's section the reference to Reader's Advisory. She has taught black women's history courses at the University of Maryland. She is one of the founding editors of SAGE, a scholarly journal on black women. She has been a bibliographer for the Association for the Study of American Life and History, annual Black History Month kits, and I think most interesting of all, she has served as a consultant to American girl. <laughs> and maybe she'll tell us that. <laughs> and those are only a few of her accomplishments. Dr. Sims Wood was a unanimous selection for the award. The testimonies of the 20, 20 people who nominated or wrote letters of support attest to her broad to the broad range of her contributions. Some praised her work as an educator and mentor, others her historical work, while still others focused on her librarianship. Whatever and wherever, we are confident that Janet Sims Wood fully reflects the ideals exemplified by James A. Partridge, and on behalf of Citizens for Maryland Libraries and Maryland's iSchool, I am proud to present her to you today as a 2014 Partridge Award nominee.
There were so many people, as I said, whose shoulders I still stand on. Many of the librarians that I came in contact with, like Dr. E.J. Gilsey, mm -hmm. Dr. Clara Stanton Young, mm -hmm. all of my colleagues that, uh, well, I went to my high school librarian, the one that got me into North Carolina College, now North Carolina Central University. She got me into that program uh, so I could uh, have an undergraduate degree in library science. Uh, and one of our partridge winners, Dr. Thomas Battle, who was my supervisor at Howard, and of course, uh, Dorothy Porter, who I'll talk about in a minute. But I do want to talk a little bit about, uh, and again, I'm in good company with those Partridge Awards. But <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Thomas Battle, who was one of our previous winners, one of the things, the reason that I was able to do so much and be out there so much, because the librarians, most of the time, don't get a chance to do and travel like I did. But one of the things that Dr. Battle wanted us to do was because most of the people that had to do books and things on African American history, Caribbean history, or African history had to come to Howard, where I work, so to do their research. One of the things he wanted us to do as librarians and archivists was to be involved, go to the conferences, present papers, be on committees, serve as offices. Uh, so he was able, a lot of times when I was able to do things, uh, it was because he was able to get some funds for me to go. And, a lot of, and some of those funds were his funds that he was supposed to be traveling with. But he did that for all of us, for the colleagues there at Howard. As we were doing stuff, he wanted us to be out in the community. He wanted us to go to the school. He wanted us to be a part of the community. And to give these presentations that we do, not just to have them to come into our library and work, but for us to go out. Because sometimes you have to take information to the people. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons that I, I became involved with the Brown Humanities Council. And they send us all over the state to do presentations. So I've done presentations all over the state of Maryland. And the most unique, of course, was when I did the one at, uh, at on the submarine over in the, on the Baltimore Hawk. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, but that means we take the information to the people, which is very, very important. And the other person that I want to uh, talk about a little bit today is Dorothy Porter Wesley, who started the, what was called the Negro Collection at Howard University. She came there in 1928, and I'm working on a biography on her right now. So I just got back from Yale, where there's 110 boxes of materials up there on her, which I only got to go to 18. <laughs> and by that time, I was so tired, I was clumsy. I was just, <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. After four days, I was tired. But anyway, Dorothy Porter was one of the people, and of course, she was Dr. Battle's uh, supervisor, and I didn't work with her, but uh, I did at Howard. But of course, we had a lot of contact because she stayed involved all these years. And as you know, Dr. Porter was one of those people who uh, believed in collaboration. So she worked with lots of different organizations. She made sure that she worked with the, my organization, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. She's the one that did publish just many, many, many bibliographies over the years on different topics. And of course, before, before computers came in, uh, that's how people got their information was from these bibliographies that we were publishing. So she published many, many, many bibliographies. She also helped a lot of the people who were starting collections. She helped them get their collection started as well. And of course, she also helped a lot of the African libraries get started. So she traveled a lot. She went to Nigeria for a year and worked in the library there and helped them get started. So she did so many things. And um, what they used to call Dorothy Porter was the bag lady. Because the story goes that uh, whenever someone died, Dorothy would be the first one there, going through, going through the attic or the, or the basement, getting stuff, <laughs> and bringing back the house. So uh, they, they call her the bag lady. But because of her, also because of her extensive research, she also was called uh, the scholar library. So that is why one of the reasons I wanted to work on her. So that other people could see uh, some of the things that she had done. But I also want to get some of the people that knew her, now, most of her colleagues, of course, have passed on, but there are lots of folks that are still around that she helped over the years, because she helped many, many people. Uh, John, John Hope Franklin talks about how he helped around. She, she gave him the first letter of uh, the book that he wrote, uh, one of the books that he wrote. So she provided the information for that to get him started. So she helped so many people. And just to say one thing about American Girls, how I got with American Girls. <laughs> one of the researchers that, 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 that came, would come to the library recommended me to the American Girls uh, organization, and that was the best paying uh, <laughs> job I ever had. <laughs> you know, when I hang 
a library could make uh, net, um, make, make five hundred dollars. They just consulted. That was a good day, and then she gave us all everything. She gave us the doll. She gave us all the furniture. We had the clothes. I have the whole collection. So, uh, that was the Addie doll that I bought. So, uh, so it, so things like that that I've been able to do over the years. Uh, some of the things that sometimes librarians don't always get a chance to do, but that's what we are. We are about collaboration. We are about helping. We are about just getting out there and making sure that the information gets out to the people. So today for me, today is a day of gratitude and a day of thankfulness. And this is for all of us who work in this field, the ones of us who are in public service, the ones of us who go out in the community, ones of us who go to conferences and speak, and for the ones that also work behind the scenes, because when those books get on the shelf, they, <coughs> what, they just didn't appear there. <laughs> <laughs> and and so uh, this is for everyone who works in this field, because this is such an honor to be able to help people. Because one of the things we as librarians always want to do is that we want to make sure that we give them best service the papers that we serve. So thank you again, and I really appreciate it. I just want to footnote, um, Diane mentioned that we, we had 20 nominations for our winner this year, I, I just want to emphasize 20. I, I've had the honor of serving on the, the committee that, that selects the Partridge Award winner for a number of years, and we have not, at least in the time I've been involved with it, seen anything like that, and it was just phenomenal. I mean, you know, it's you write a nomination letter, you don't write a sentence saying, I nominate this person. So 20 people took time to write 